Since 1934, Iowa's farmers have turned to the Iowa Farm Bureau spokesman as their trusted news source. Now, the spokesman speaks. Listen in and hear from leading experts on topics important to farmers and agriculture. Now, here's your host. Welcome to this special episode of the Spokesman Speaks podcast. I'm Caitlin Lamb, and thank you for tuning in. Today, we're getting into the second episode of our three-part series on managing farm stress, featuring expert advice from Dr. Larry Tranel. In our first episode, we talked about identifying when we're carrying too much stress and specific techniques to use when we're overwhelmed by stress. So if you haven't taken a listen to that, I'd encourage you to do so. Next week on May 18th, we will be tackling managing farm stress and family life. So be sure to subscribe to the Spokesman Speaks podcast in your favorite podcast app to catch that final episode of this three-part series. But today, Dr. Trannell, a pastoral psychologist and dairy specialist with Iowa State Extension, and I are talking about how to make the best business decisions in the face of stress and how to communicate with the people who are part of our farm business team. So, Larry, thank you for joining us for segment two in our stress management podcast series. In our first session, we talked about recognizing when our stress is above normal levels, specific coping skills to help during stressful times, and also the importance of talking about our stress with others. And in keeping with that theme of communication, I want to discuss with you stress in decision making and business communications. So we know, yes, farming is a lifestyle, and it's one that Iowa farm families feel very blessed to live, but we all also know that farming is a business. So how can stress affect our financial and business decisions? Okay, so the the bottom line is that stress will affect decision making no matter what kind of decision it is. And so when you start taking a look at, let's say, the personal ones, we kind of dealt with that in the previous segment. Uh, But when it starts taking a look at how do those are decisions, it's because we tend to withdraw We tend not to uh, respond sometimes in a very positive manner. And so that really gets into our decision making, whether it be just uh, by ourselves or as a family or as a a family living on the farm. And so when we take a look at those personal decisions, stress really kind of mitigates our ability, puts down our ability to actually make good decisions. Okay, because we're not thinking clearly because um, whether it be lack of oxygen to the brain or just our focus isn't there, we can't uh, really make sure and put down this side or the other thing about um, an organized, calculated way to try to make that decision. When we take a look at the financial or business decisions, I think when we're there, um, you know, people, especially if you're consultants that work with farmers, this is one thing I really try to do is help them to focus. Okay. And at a time when they need to make the most serious decisions, it's kind of like when they're under their most stress, it's kind of their the biggest inability to make the decision. And so I think the biggest skill I try to work with producers there is not just to help them write it down, but sometimes if they're really under stress, please write it down for them. Okay. Because um, what I tend to find is that people can process information and they can think about this issue and think about this issue. And I've had farmers that have said, you know, we've been uh, wrestling with this issue for the past 20 years, but until the fact that you made us write it down, we never got anything done with it. Okay. So how do we sort out our, our thoughts and organize our thoughts and actually a game plan? And so it's not just Um, writing down our thoughts, but it's actually putting them into an order about the pros and cons of this situation, or this is what I'm going to do. Now, these are the action steps that I'm going to um, use to try to um, attain this goal. So I think that's a pretty important piece that uh, we work with there. So the financial business decisions, you know, I think those are just, we need to organize them, put them down on paper and talk to other people and let them kind of um, shoot holes in it. And I tend to find that works out very well for me uh, because there's definitely a lot of things that I just sometimes you just don't think about. And then sometimes we realize, and I found this out on my own farm, is that sometimes we're the worst consultant on our own farm. (laughs) And I'll just say when I was building my own milking parlor, um, and that's what I specialize in, I thought I knew exactly where this milking parlor was going to go. And I just asked a friend who also worked in milking parlors to just come over and take a look at it. And lo and behold, that milking parlor does not sit where I thought it should have sat. Okay, so again, get an outside set of eyes to try to work with some of these things. 
everything you said really resonates with me um, as a beginning farmer. This is the second year my husband, Craig, is putting in a crop. Uh, we still have some old crop left to sell that's got to go somewhere in these next few months. And uh, because of our on-farm storage capacity, we know there's a lot of grain this fall that has to go straight from the field to the co-op. So, you know, trying to market that as well. And I know each morning, as I check grain prices, I almost like hold my breath, which is opposite of what you said before. Like we should keep breathing, right? Um, but, you know, I had a marketing plan put together at the beginning of the year. And now I'm like, yeah, maybe I have to change my price targets here, um, especially with uh, a local ethanol plant that we sell to slowing down production and um, not offering as many bids. And so we know right now that livestock and grain prices have heavily declined, some more than others. Um, and options on where to market commodities continue to come online and go offline. And some farmers are having to make extremely hard decisions. Um, so going back to, you know, I know that you're a, a pastoral psychologist, but then you also have this farm business uh, management side. How can we plan for short-term and long-term needs on the farm, especially as we know prices may be in flux, and, but bills and cash rents might still be due? Okay, the first thing I would say is to make sure that we have an operating plan. And I think there's some farm businesses, and it's kind of sad to say that as important as an operating plan is, we also need to have an exit plan. And even though we don't want to think about exit plans, there is a time to pull the plug on, on certain operations. And sometimes we are so emotionally tied to this farm that it's so difficult for us to even think that maybe this farm is not going to become a reality for us. And so you mentioned uh, you as a beginning farmer, uh, we've got other older generation farmers that, uh, you know, they're planning to farm till the day they die. Okay. So at some point in time, when is it just not worth it financially, the physical and the mental stress to continue to go on as a farm operation? So I think that's a decision that um, needs to be um, thought of that we not just have an operating plan, but at what point, and it's easier to make that decision while you still have the decision to make because we realize, and I hate to even mention the word um, uh, bankruptcy, but as we realize that people that can't pay bills and the banker is putting a lot of pressure on them. And when you start taking a look at that spiral to bankruptcy, once it gets to that point where we start on the spiral, it's tough to stop it. Okay, so those decisions, I think, need to be made while you still have the decision-making capacity because else we get to a point where the banker is going to make that decision or somebody outside our family is going to actually have to make that decision because it's a financial one and the buck's got to stop somewhere. The money's got to get paid back uh, somehow. So I think as we take a look at our responsibility with lenders and bankers and other people that we work with, um, uh, nutrition consultants or places that we buy, feed, or we sell our crop, I think the bottom line is just open communication. And open communication starts by being very positive about it, that we realize um, as best we can that um, when we go talk to somebody that we um, try to start with some positive things, try to couch it, you know, it's not just a nice day, but we really appreciate uh, the good job that you do in buying our product or whatever it is. And when we take a look at, um, if we're kind of all doomsday, we're just going to put some thoughts into their mind about, well, this farm's not going to make it just because of the attitude of the operator. So how do we try to stay positive just in our own um, attitude as we try to have this open communication uh, with other people? So when we uh, take a look at these obligations and how do we com com talk to with them in times of stress, yeah, maybe they don't need to know everything, but I think it's important that we stay pretty open that, yeah, I can't pay this bill this month, but here's my plan. And as long as the price stays at this level here, I should be able to pay it off by, say, August or September or whatever. And I realize there's a lot of agribusinesses right now that are not loaning any credit whatsoever. They're as scared as anybody else about what's going to happen here in the next three to six months with some things in agriculture. But again, I think open communication is just without a doubt the key. Thanks, Larry. These are all really great things to think about in taking in that big picture and long-term look at our farming businesses. And earlier, we had talked about stress mitigating our ability to make clear decisions. And so, especially now when we're feeling overwhelmed, it may be important to get that second set of eyes on our business plans or to look at what we're doing now to see what's possible for changes needed in the future. 
So can you give us some ideas of who farmers should be looking to or reaching out to right now for that second set of eyes to take an unbiased look at their operations or business plans? And what's the best way to open up that conversation? Yeah, I think the, the big thing is that they do have open conversations. And so those people that are uh, part of our operation that are actually providing advice mm-hmm. possibly to us already, like our veterinarians or our agronomists, um, I always recommend that we have open conversations with our bankers, especially because uh, we just need to realize that they carry a pretty special role in a lot of these farms. They also have to make sure that they're protecting the assets and also make sure that there's enough cash flow to actually get the bills paid on time. And so as long as we realize that the bankers themselves are can be some pretty good um, pieces of advice, but just to realize that they're probably in more of a protection mode in a cash flow mode versus a profitability mode for a lot of um, producers as they try to look at the profitability of their farm. So um, just to kind of be cautious, but yet be very open with them, I think as well, especially when times are tough. So I think aside from that, please look to ISU extension and outreach that is covered in every county across the state. And yes, we are open for business, even though a lot of things are closed down, but most of us are working out of our homes. I tend to say that Iowa State extension is probably the best extension service in the country. And I don't think I'm being that biased Uh, by saying that either but there is a a person that works out in the field and just about every enterprise that we have including our farm management and sometimes even some um, you know farmer market type things there's a lot of those around the state as well but we have them in dairy swine beef so whatever uh, enterprise people are dealing with we probably have a field specialist that would uh, be working with that and be a very unbiased source of advice and if they don't know the answer I'm sure they probably know somebody that does and probably the easiest way to get a hold of any of us is to contact your local county extension office or get on the website and click on your particular county and it will list all the uh, specialists that are available uh, to each and every county. I think those are some really great resources, Larry, and I would be biased too because I used to work for Extension, so I know that there are some wonderful people out there who are doing great things in the ag and and farm business world, and I know that another great resource is the Iowa Concern Line, so can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, so the Iowa Concern, there's a hotline available, and I'll give you the number here, 1-800-447-1985. It's available for stress. It's available 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Uh, we've got trained staff always on the, the line. And so it's free and confidential for any crisis situation. There's also a legal education a number where you can actually dial 711. And there's also where you can chat with them via email uh, with just at iowaconcern at iastate.edu. So that live chat, secure communication. There's also um, Iowa Healthy Families line at 1-800-369-2229. And that's a toll-free line for just health information and things like that. And there's also a teen line. So 1-800-443-8336. And so I think with any um, issues that we're dealing with, Iowa State has a great resource in this hotline and some of the um, telephone numbers that kind of are associated with the Iowa Concern Hotline, which again, 1-800-447-1985. We're here to help. Thank you, Larry. These are really hard issues to talk about. And your advice for keeping an open mind to changes on the farm and bouncing ideas off of one another in the face of challenges and struggle is important, uh, probably now more than ever. We know farmers are incredibly resilient and innovative, and we can only plan for the things that we can control. And for the things that we can't control, we have to keep perspective so we can make the best decisions for our families and our happiness. With that, we thank you for tuning in to part two of our stress management series. And remember to subscribe to the Spokesman Speaks podcast in your favorite podcast app to catch our final episode on May 18th. As always, thank you for reading The Spokesman, and thanks for listening to The Spokesman Speaks. Until next time, take care. Thank you for listening to The Spokesman Speaks, a podcast by Iowa Farm Bureau. Check out more podcasts and articles from The Spokesman at iowafarmbureau.com slash spokesman. You can also find and subscribe to The Spokesman Speaks podcast in the Apple Podcasts app, Google Play, and other popular podcast apps. We appreciate your ratings and reviews and welcome your feedback at podcast at ifbf.org.